If you or someone you know is in the market for a new iPhone, should you get an iPhone 11 now or wait and get an iPhone 12 later this year? That's the question you all started asking me pretty much immediately after I posted my last video about whether you should get an Intel Mac now or an Apple Silicon Mac later. So yeah, hit the subscribe button right now so you don't miss any of these comparisons. And the question makes total sense because it's exactly the same kind of problem. Want versus need, immediate versus delayed gratification, a phone in the hand versus a potentially better phone in the future. Now, Apple hasn't released the iPhone 12 yet. They haven't even announced it. It's basically a non-existent product, but Apple has been releasing new iPhones every year since the first one in 2007. So releasing another one in 2020 is just about the safest bet in consumer tech. And sure, with all the shutdowns and everything, they could be later than usual this year, which has typically been September to October for the last few years. But still, it's safe to assume they're coming. And based on all the trends and rumors, at least a partially new design could be coming with them. The current rounded iPhone design began with the original iPad mini, the iPod touch, and the iPhone 6 over half a decade ago. Two years ago though, the iPad Pro brought back the more squared off sides of the previous iPhone 5 and original iPhone SE. And rumor has it, the iPhone 12 will follow that lead. The iPhone 12 Pro, maybe even the stainless steel version of the beloved, beloved iPhone 4 design. You know, a retro future chic, techno nostalgia. Now, some people love those squared off sides because they love the way they dug into their hands and made for a better, tighter grip. And others just hated them for exactly the same reason, because they dug into their hands and they just didn't find them comfortable. So if you like the current curvy design of the iPhone 11, it's right there, ready and available to you immediately. If you prefer the flatter, more retro look though, the iPhone 12 may be exactly what you're waiting for. The iPhone 11 has a 6.1 inch LCD display and the iPhones 11 Pro have 5.7 inch and 6.5 inch OLED displays. And Apple is so good at color management that from a completely wide gamut pipeline to individual calibration at the factory, both of them look pretty much as identical as the very different technologies allow. The more expensive OLED displays though, they do have deeper blacks, more detailed highlights, and a much, much wider contrast ratio. But they also color shift off axis and use pulse width modulation to lower brightness levels. And some people just don't like that. Now, rumor has it the iPhone 12 lineup will be just all in on OLED. Also that there'll be a smaller 5.4 inch model and an even bigger 6.7 inch model. So if PWM bothers you or you just prefer LCD and you're fine with the current iPhone 11 size, you might wanna pick up and stick with that iPhone 11 for as long as you can. If you prefer OLED though, and especially if you want a smaller or larger iPhone than what's currently on the market, you're probably gonna wanna wait for the iPhone 12 to be on the market. Current iPhone 11 models all have Intel modems that despite at and so shady, they should be illegal 5GE labels, absolutely all cap out at 4G LTE. Speed is decent, coverage is decent, but there are still a lot of people, especially outside big cities that just don't get a lot of signal in a lot of places. The iPhone 12 is supposed to be getting Qualcomm modems back and ones that can run on the newfangled 5G networks. The iPhone 12 Pro models will be getting everything, including millimeter wave, which has so much trouble penetrating things like walls, and, you know, leaves, the rain, that I still think it may never become a real grown up consumer facing technology. It's working stadiums and things. All of them though should support sub six, seven, eight, nine, or whatever the low to mid high band standard ends up settling on. While nowhere nearly as fast as millimeter wave, it's far more robust. And as the networks roll out, it should finally give everyone, everyone outside big cities, all the bars they've been promised in all those places for all of these years. So if you're just fine with LTE connection speeds and quality, you'll be fine with the iPhone 11. But if you've been waiting for something faster or just more reliable, waiting on 5G should have you covered, like literally. The iPhone 11 already has beyond industry leading performance, maybe industry lapping performance and efficiency with the A13 Bionic, as well as really good battery life and will likely get software updates for at least another four years, maybe more. I mean, the 2015 iPhone 6S is getting iOS 14 later this year in 2020. And that trend is the rule more than it is the exception. But the iPhone 12 is expected to get an even higher performance, higher efficiency, even more silicon feature packed A14. 
What that means for battery life, we just don't know yet, but it should mean updates for another five years at least. If you really don't care about an extra year of chipset performance and efficiency or updates, then the iPhone 11 will still be better than any other phone you can buy for at least another 12 to 24 months. But if you want the most advanced silicon you can get and updates for as long as you absolutely can get them, the iPhone 12 will give you all of that. If there's one thing you can count on year after year, iPhone after iPhone, is that the camera is going to get better and better. The iPhone 11 added better sensors, a new ultra-wide angle camera to the system, and night mode and deep fusion to the computational models. It doesn't have the big glass of Samsung or Huawei or the big algorithms of Google, but it has better algorithms than the first two and way better glass than the last one, making it capture photos as good as anything else on the market and video arguably still the best of all. And the iPhone 12 should absolutely be more of the same, and then some. Rumor has it that the LiDAR scanner, the same depth sensor that the iPad Pro got just this spring, is going to be going into the pro-level iPhone 12s this fall. That'll be big for augmented reality, basically like getting the true-depth camera on the back. But we should also see improvements across the board for all the cameras. The image signal processor in the A14, processes like Smart HDR and Night Mode, just everything. So if you're perfectly fine with the iPhone 11's state of the 2019 art camera system, then you'll be perfectly fine sticking with the iPhone 11, especially the Pro with its telephoto camera. If you do want the absolute latest and greatest though, if photos and videos are the most important part of a phone to you, then you'll want to wait on the iPhone 12. When it comes to pricing, Apple's strategy may be to try to maintain average selling price and margins over time, but they've also proven kind of canny about how exactly they go about that. Most recently, they've been pushing premium prices up with redesigns and more expensive technologies like OLED and true depth cameras, but they've also been pushing technology down to make more compelling, even less expensive entry level models. The iPhone XR was more expensive, but the iPhone 11 less expensive, and the new iPhone SE less expensive again. Now, normally OLED displays in 5G are more expensive technologies, and both of those are supposed to be making their way into the base model iPhone 12. But rather than a price hike, rumor has it the new 5.4 inch model will be slightly less expensive again, with the 6.1 inch model getting slightly more expensive, while the Pro models stay exactly the same, dropping the cost of entry but balancing out everything overall. So unless you're waiting on that next smaller iPhone 12, you won't pay any more money getting an iPhone 11 now. If you do want that smaller iPhone 12 and OLED on it, you can save a few bucks waiting for the iPhone 12. Also, Apple may keep the base model iPhone 11 around for $100 less once the iPhone 12 is announced, if that's meaningful to you. And here's where I repeat my basic advice. always. Always wait as long as you possibly can to buy. Then buy when you absolutely need to buy. Buy the best you can afford at the time. In other words, if you really need an iPhone now, get an iPhone 11 or even an iPhone SE. If you don't, wait and see what the iPhone 12 models have to offer. And when you need to buy, buy the one that best suits your needs. And then just enjoy the hell out of it because there will always be something new and something next. Like my brand new mug. And yeah, it's the first thing I've done on this brand new channel. And so I wanted it to be something useful, something comforting, something for coffee, tea, cocoa, whatever you love best. Pre-orders are about to wrap up and we should start shipping soon. Things are taking a little longer than usual these days. But if you pre-order right now, you'll also get a free month of Nebula. That's the amazing new streaming video service I'm building with all my education YouTube creator friends. People like Legal Eagle, Thomas Frank, Jordan Herod, TechAlter, and more. It gets fresh content all day every day, and it's a place where we can try out our new ideas without having to worry about the tyranny of the algorithm or being demonetized or just being told to stay in our niche down lane. Things like working titles, where a bunch of us take a look at our favorite TV shows, something that would just never work with the algorithm but works fantastically well with Nebula. You also get all my regular videos, but without any ads or sponsorships, like it all, and special, extended, full-length versions of my podcast interviews, 45-minute chats with iJustine, Brian Tong, Walt Mossberg, and more. So head on over now, get the brand new mug, and you'll also get a month of Nebula absolutely free. Even if you already subscribe to Nebula, you'll get a free month tacked right onto your existing subscription. Standard.tv slash Renee Ritchie, get your mug, and within 24 hours, you'll get your free month of Nebula. Biggest win-win in the history of history. Thanks, Nebula. Thanks to all of you for your support. Check out my iPhone 12 playlist above and see you next video.